Okay, let's start. Uh, this is CVPR 2020 tutorial on image retrieval in the wild. Uh, billion scale, approximate nearest neighbor search. Uh, I'm Yusuke Matsui from the University of Tokyo. So the task here is nearest neighbor search. And then, so given the n d-dimensional database vectors, xn, uh, n equal 1 to large n, like this. Our task here is uh, like this. Given the query vector q, uh, find the closest vector from the database like here so mathematically it's defined like this q minus xn and this is distance function and we can find we will find the uh, minimum items then in this case x74 is the most uh, smallest one so it's similar to uh, this one so this is one uh, one of the fundamental problems in computer science so the solution here is of course a linear scan it is a linear uh, cost of the number of vector n, so it's uh, it's slow if n is large, right? So we need a faster method. Okay, so then this tutorial we are considering approximate nearest neighbor search A N N. So it's a much faster search, and it uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, exact neighbors. So there's a trade-off: a runtime accuracy and memory consumption. So this is a approximated version of nearest neighbor search. So this is a sense of scale. So in this tutorial, uh, we are considering billion scale data and everything is on memory. So like this, so dimensionality is 100 or something. The number of items is 10 to 6 to 10 to 9. And the memory consumption is like 32 gigabyte RAM. So it's a usual computer level. And uh, uh, runtime is like 10 millisecond or something. So millisecond level, right? This is a sense of scale. So why uh, nearest neighbor or, or approximate nearest neighbor such is uh, used for computer vision? The direct application is of course image retrieval. So if image is if an image is represented by a feature vector, then finding similar feature vector means uh, finding similar images. Right. So we can use that for image retrieval. Uh, Takuma will uh, explain this image retrieval in the next tutorial. Uh, another example is personal identification. So here the task is uh, finding the same image, uh, same person from the uh, images. So uh, Jen will uh, present this talk in the next next uh, section. Okay. Another example is clustering. So if we consider k-means clustering, for example, uh, we need to create a, a distance matrix. That is essentially a nearest neighbor search. Another example is, of course, KNN recognition. This is also a direct application. Then if we see the history, so why computer vision people developed nearest neighbor search? That is because it was used for fast construction of vagal feature representation. So this is a history. So one of the benchmark is still a SIFT feature vectors okay so this is the uh, uh, most important slide of my talk uh, this is a cheat sheet for approximate nearest, nearest neighbor search in python as of 2020 so i will explain later uh, details uh, but you, if you follow these uh, lines then you can find the best algorithm for your data so this is a Again, uh, don't forget this is the best, uh, most important slide of today's my talk. Okay, so this tutorial consists of two parts. Our first part, uh, I will introduce a nearest neighbor search, so exact nearest neighbor search. And the second part, I will introduce an approximate nearest neighbor search. So let's start with the first one, nearest neighbor search. So again, this is a, a picture of our problem. So first of all, you should try this nearest neighbor search. So without approximation, because uh, recent algorithm, uh, recent libraries are really fast. So I first introduce a naive implementation, then introduce a, a fast implementation that is from Face Library from Facebook AI Research. Uh, you will see many times in this uh, my tutorial today, because it's super fast. And I want you guys to experience the drastic difference between two implementations. Okay. So this is a problem. Uh, let's say we have m d-dimensional vectors, uh, query vectors, like q equal q1 to qm. 
So in this talk, uh, we suppose that there are many query vectors. And there are n d dimensional uh, database vectors. So this is database. So x1 to xn. So m equal uh, is sup, uh, n equal uh, much larger than m here. So our task here is given query vector and database vector, so computer uh, distance function. So here uh, our distance is a squared Euclidean distance, for example. Then this is a naive uh, implementation. This is a pseudocode of like Python plus C++. But anyway, given Q and X, the naive way is of course is uh, first define dif first define difference at zero, and we iterate or dimensionality and uh, taking minus so difference of each element and uh, squared and, uh, and sum them all. This is difference so L2 square function. Then our task is computing all combinations. So we run two for loops. The first for loop is for query. And usually we parallelize the query side here. So we don't use parallel algorithm inside Q, inside here. Then for each query, uh, we compute each database vector, then compute L2 square distance. Then uh, we need to select a minimum item by heap, but uh, we just omit now here. So this is a naive implementation. Right. Okay. So next, I will introduce a faster, much much faster implementation of phase. Uh, very interestingly, a phase switch algorithm, uh, two algorithms. If m is less than twenty, so m meaning that the number of query vectors. So phase uh, compute this distance by symbol d. Uh, in other cases, they use uh, they expand this equation by like this then compute everything by brass. So it's a kind of interesting switch. So I will introduce one by one. First, uh, first I will introduce this one. Okay, so this is a computation of x minus y by SIMD. And this is actual code, actual SIMD code. And this is a reference. So this code is now uh, written like here. Okay. Then this is an example. So let's say x equal equal uh, 32, 31 dimensional vectors, and y is also 31 dimensional vectors, and each element is float 32 bit. Okay. So how to compute this uh, very quickly? So they use SIMD. SIMD is a, a like a special register to compute uh, everything at once. So in this case, they prepare a 256 bit SIMD register, MX and MY. So these, by using these register, uh, we can process eight floats at once. So in this case, they first read a uh, first eight element of X to MX and, and the first eight element of Y to MY. Then taking minus at once. So this operation is uh, just run, just one operation. Then uh, they are taking uh, a multiplication. So uh, this means uh, they compute a difference, right? Then stack that. Then let's uh, iterate that. So next here, the next eight elements are read here and read, read here. Then in uh, the same manner, they compute difference. They compute multiplication and they uh, plus equal. So they sum them all. Okay, then here, uh, close. So there are no eight elements here. So they take uh, sum of first four element and last four element. Then they uh, store them on a 128-bit SIMD register. Okay, then in this part, they do the same thing for 128-bit register, SIMD register. Like here, 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 here. So everything is just four element. Okay. Then finally, it's last. So the last, so they put zero here, zero here, then do the same thing. Okay. So finally, uh, sum them all, then you can get the result. Okay. So this is a SIMD implementation of uh, Euclidean square distance. The interesting thing here is so SIMD code of phase are very simple and very easy to read. So it's really, uh, it's really nice to study. So being able to read SIMD code uh, comes in handy sometimes, so why this implementation is super fast. And another example of SIMD register, uh, SIMD L2 square is, uh, you can find that here, okay. 
Okay, then uh, we finish this part. Then uh, let's move to this one. So brass thing. So here uh, we compute this function uh, equation by brass. So we first stack m d dimensional query vectors into a d times m matrix here q big q, and in the same manner we stack uh, database vectors like x, right? So we first compute a table. Uh, like q norms equal norms q. This norms function is also similarly accelerated functions, and this is uh, like like this. For each query vector, they compute the norm, Euclidean norm, and the same here. Then here, inner product, we compute inner product between q and x like this. Q transpose x by a brass function. So this is matrix multiplication by brass. So as you can see, if the number of query vector is large, then this part is dominant, like if q and x are large. So they use this algorithm if q is large. Uh, interesting thing here is the difference of the background matter. So inter Mascano library is 30% faster than open brass. But anyway, this is brass function, so it's super fast. Then after that, uh, they scan and the sum. So parallel four for the query side and for the database side. Then each distance is computed just by a fetching item m and fetching and fetching norm and fetching norm and in a product. Right? So this is same as this part. Okay, so they by using that they use uh, like matrix multiplication to compute uh, nearest neighbors. Okay. Then finally I need to say that actually so GPU is much more faster than CPU. So, a face provides a GPU implementation as well, and that is super fast. So, it's in the GPU, they always uh, compute to this uh, expanded version. So, there is a benchmark for k-means. So, k-means uh, is a, a nice benchmark for nearest neighbor search. And they, from there, this benchmark, so CPU takes t uh, one, 11 minutes, and it's fast, 10 times faster if we use P100 GPU here. It's faster, 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 faster if they are using a multiple GPU or float 16 or something. So if a GPU is available and it's a GPU memory is enough, then uh, you should try GPU nearest neighbor. And uh, please be careful that the behavior is a little bit different. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is reference. Okay. Though so the first part, uh, nearest neighbor search is finished. Then let's move to the, uh, the approximate nearest neighbor search. Okay. okay, so this is a summary of approximate nearest neighbor search. Uh, I summarize the nearest neighbor search algorithm into three. So first, these two are million scale, for million scale data. So meaning that the number of database item is million level, 10 to 6. And this one is uh, 10 to 9, so it's billion level. And for million level, uh, I'm considering uh, this one is the methods which use raw data, original data. So that's accuracy is good, but uh, of course memory consumption is not good because they need to store original data. And this right side one is a compression, compression method. So the original data are compressed in some uh, short code. So the accuracy is not good, but memory uh, is it's, it's very memory efficient. So this is two method. Then for billion scale method, uh, the only way we can do is using inverted index plus data compression. So first we divide the space into some small regions, and for each region, so items in, items inside this region is uh, stored as a posting list, like here, with the data compression scheme. So this is the only way we can do. Okay, I will introduce one by one. So first I will introduce locality sensitive hashing. Locality sensitive hashing is uh, maybe one of the most famous and well known methods for uh, approximate nearest neighbor search. It's a set of hash functions plus hash tables. So they, so they map similar items to the same symbol with a high probability. So, in a recording phase, uh, if, we want, if we like to record X studying, for example, then we put this into a hash, hash functions, then get a symbol. So this is hash table with uh, entry is this one. So we use this symbol as an entry and put an ID here, 13, here, inside this. In the same manner, we compute hash another hash functions and take symbol and 
other ID here. So we repeat this type of uh, operations, then all IDs are inserted to these hash functions, hash tables. And in the search phase, given the query vector Q, uh, again, we compute a hash function here. This is a symbol. Then we can see these uh, associated items here. So they are the potential candidate for final result. So we uh, take these. And in the same manner, we can compute hash table uh, like this. So they, uh, they collected this. So then we compute Q with these items uh, by the written distance. So this is a post processing. This is LSH. So how, uh, what kind of hash function do we use? Let's see. There are many methods, but generally speaking, it's a random projection. Okay. Then uh, the good thing of uh, locally hash sensitive hashing is that it's math friendly. So because everything is random process, so we can use mathematics to analyze their algorithm. And it's popular in the uh, theory areas. But uh, the uh, disadvantage is that it requires a, a large memory cost. And we need several tables to boost the accuracy. And we need to store the original data on memory. And usually data dependent methods such as product quantization are better for real world data. So in recent computer vision papers, LSH has been treated as a classic method. However, uh, in fact, so if consider a next candidate, uh, we can do that uh, in a practical memory consumption. So this green one is, uh, uh, I explained first things, but we can consider actually next candidate, next similar symbol. Then we can use this as a candidate as well. So this idea is used for, to create a Falcon library. Falcon. Falcon is a, uh, maybe one of the most famous uh, LSH based library. You can install that by just pip. Uh, the good thing is it's faster uh, for data addition compared to other method because we need to compute the hash function, just, just hash functions. And it, so it's maybe useful for on the fly addition. And the parameter, uh, the, the bad thing is parameter configuration is uh, not intuitive. Okay. This is a reference. OK, so I talked about LSH here. So next, I will talk about the tree a space partitioning method. OK, uh, so the most important, uh, I mean, most famous method is basically uh, maybe FRAN, Fast Library for Approximation and Nearest Neighbor Search. It's, a, uh, it's this library automatically selects the algorithm from a randomized KD tree or k-min tree, like this. So these tree-based methods are basically KD tree type of thing. So uh, recursively divide the space into some uh, small space and run such. So this library is good in terms of code. So it's a good code. So it's implemented in OpenCV or PCL, like famous libraries, and very popular like 10 years, 10 years ago. Um, the disadvantage is, uh, again, so it takes a large memory consumption because the original data need to be stored. And it seems it's not actively maintained now. And another tree-based method is annoy. It's uh, like 2 min tree plus multiple trees plus a shared priority queue. In a recording phase, they select two points randomly, then divide a space and repeat this step and repeat this step. So we can create uh, like three uh, type of things. In a search phase, given this query vector, we just see this cell, then compute the distance, item, uh, compute the distance. So, uh, cause this is uh, like tree, so we can uh, traverse uh, this tree by a uh, log times comparison. Okay, so it's fast. So it's basically, it's a KD tree type of method. And one feature is that uh, if we need a data point, we can use this priority queue. So that's the uh, same as KD3. And another feature is uh, if we'd like, to, we'd like to boost the accuracy, then we can use the multiple tree with a shared priority queue. So we can prepare uh, several trees and run search. Then we can merge this result like this. So this region is better than this each region. Okay. So this is annoying. Uh, you can install that by just beep. And this is a code. Uh, it's it was developed at Spotify. Now it seems it's very well maintained and stable. 
Um, its interface is simple, well, with only a few parameters. So, because it's very easy to use. So, it's uh, recently to use, it is used for baseline of million scale data. An interesting thing is uh, they support a memory map, so it can be accessed from similar processes. And limitation is again, it's to, it require it requires a large memory consumption, and runtime itself is not so much faster than uh, next method I will introduce. Okay. Uh, okay. Then tree-based method is finished. So again, uh, we finish the. Uh, we next move to the final method for raw data method. It's graph traversal based method. Okay. So it's very popular in recent years. Uh, that is graph traversal method. Because uh, around 2017, it turned out that the graph traversal based method works pretty well for million scale real world data. So the pioneer is a navigable small world graph NSW and its hierarchical version, hierarchical NSW, HNSW. So this is so uh, super important. So please uh, remember this one if you don't know. And there are many implementations. Okay, so I will uh, explain this algorithm. Uh, so how to record data? So because this is a graph-based method, we need to create a graph. Uh, please consider uh, each node is a database graph, a database vector. So this blue one is, for example, x setting. Uh, let's say this is a graph of x1 to x90. So I will explain how to add a new vector here. Given a new database vector, we will create a new edges to neighbors, meaning that like this. So for this x91, so these three are uh, closest vectors. So we can simply uh, create edges here. Okay, and that's all. So we can repeat this type of process, then create a graph. So interesting thing is array links can be long because in the array phase, so there are not so much vectors. So some vectors are far away from some vectors, but still we need to make a link. So such links can be quite long. And such long links encourage a large hop, making the fast convergence for such. So it's kind of kind of interesting uh, part. Okay, so the search phase, how to search? If we have a query vector here, so our task is finding the uh, similar one. So in this case, this is a result. So how to find this one? So we start from a random point. We select random point as an entry point, like here. Then from the connected nodes, we will find the closest one to the query. So meaning that for this, there are three connected nodes here, these three, right? And we compute the distance between this one and the query, and this one and the query, and this one and the query. These three green lines. Then in this case, this guy is uh, uh, closest to the query. So we hop this one, like this. Then we repeat this process, like this. Uh, for this, there are some uh, connected nodes, but this one is uh, most closest to the query. So we hop this. Then hop this. So we repeat this process. This is a search. Okay. So this extension is hierarchical NSW, HNSW. Uh, we can construct the previously I explained algorithm by hierarchical manner. So this structure works pretty well for real world data. So for example, this is a fine, most fine, finest level graph, uh, and we can subsample some of them. Subsample some of them, for example. Then we start to search on this uh, coarse graph, like here. Then move to the same node on the final graph, then we can run search again, again, again. So by repeating this process, we can run search in a hierarchical manner. Okay. So this is a library NMS lib, no metric space library. Uh, the, this library contains a lot of methods, so you can find method, especially HNSW is here. So this HNSW option is the best method as of 2020 for medium scale data, and it provides a simple interface. So if memory consumption is not a problem, you should try this one. So again and again, the disadvantage, disadvantage is that uh, it requ requires a large memory consumption. 
And uh, another thing is uh, data addition is not fast here. Okay, so since HNSW is super strong, so there are many other implement uh, there are two other implementations. So this library HNSW lib is a spin-off library from the NMS lib I explained in a previous slide. So this includes only HNSW, so it's maybe simpler, it may be simpler, so you can use it for if you want to extend extend this algorithm. And this is a face again. Uh, face also implement uh, HNSW. Okay. Then graph-based method uh, very strong, so there are many other graph-based approaches. So from Alibaba they provide this uh, graph-based method. And from Microsoft Research Asia, they also provide this kind of method. Uh, they said that it's used in the inside Bing. And from Yahoo Japan, they provide uh, another graph-based method, uh, NGT. And this one is actually strong. So this NGT and NMS Lib are fighting each other for the benchmark. Okay, this is reference. Okay, so we ex uh, I explained that this million scale method and uh, method which use original data. Then I will move to that this compressed data method. So in this method, so each vector is compressed to some kind of short form, short code. Okay, so I will start to explain this. Okay, the basic idea here is that uh, we convert uh, n-dimensional feature vector into some form of short code. Right, because the uh, for this data we need at least four nd byte to represent these vectors. Because uh, if each element is thirty two bit float, then that means four byte. So four nd is uh, must require, of course. So if n or d is too large, so we cannot read all of the data on memory. Because for example, if d is one hundred and n is equal to ten to nine, then it takes just uh, data uh, 500 gigabytes, so it's, we cannot read everything. So the idea is to convert each vector to a short code. And we design a short code such that uh, memory is like efficient. For example, if this one code takes just 32 bit, then these data can be represented by just 4 gigabytes. Okay. Then we run search for a short code world. So what kind of conversion is preferred? So the distance between two codes can be cal uh, computed. For example, this two, uh, humming distance between these two codes can be computed. And that distance can be quickly uh, computed quickly. And that distance approximates the original distance between the original vectors. For example, uh, L2 squared distance between two vectors uh, approximated by the humming distance between two codes. And sufficient small length of code can achieve the above uh, three criteria. Okay, this is basic idea. Then I explain two methods, a lookup based method and a humming based method. And a humming based method is like this. So each feature vector is uh, com each feature vector is converted to a binary vectors, uh, like B bit binary vector here, and its humming distance uh, can be computed and it approximates the original vector. Uh, there are quite a lot of methods actually, so please take a look at the uh, survey paper if you have interest. And this is not the main scope of this tutorial because uh, PQ is usually uh, more accurate in terms of accuracy for nearest neighbor search. Okay, okay then uh, I'll move to lookup based method. This is product quantization. Okay, product quantization, PQ. Uh, this method uh, is a very simple. So we split a vector into sub vectors and quantize each vector. So in this case, our task is this one vector, d dimensional x vector, to uh, compress this to some form of short code, PQ code. Okay. To do that, we need to prepare a code book, and that is trained beforehand by learning k-means on the training data. So in this case, two dimensional 256 vectors and a same one and uh, same one here. Okay. Then what should we do? So you first split this vector into three parts in this case. Then from the first two dimensional vectors, we find the closest code word here. From here, in this case, this ID two is the most uh, similar. Then we just record 
just this ID 2. So we just record an integer here. And do the same thing here, and do the same thing here. And that's all. So this is product quantization, product quantization, and it's very simple and very memory efficient, and the distance can be estimated, I will explain later. So it's essentially, it's just running a vector quantization three times in this case. So uh, one thing is, uh, this is bar notation here. So given the d-dimensional vector, we represent the bar uh, for to say PQ code. So this, if we, we you see bar, that means this is PQ code like a uh, set of integers. Okay. Okay. So first, I will explain why it's memory efficient. So as I said, if one element is float, 32 bit. Then the original vector is, for example, if d equals 128, then it takes uh, 4,000 bits. On the other hand, the PQ code. So usually this ID is the designed uh, like small integer. So it's we can we need just uh, one one unsigned char 8 bit to represent the data. So if m equals 8, this is a typical situation. Then it takes 64 bit. So the whole data is 64 times memory efficient. Okay, so this is memory efficient. And the distance estimations, uh, we can estimate distance very, uh, we can estimate the very, uh, distance. It's, it's a kind of interesting uh, property. So this is query vector, for example, and uh, they are database vectors. So our task is find the uh, similar vectors from database vectors, right? So first we'll apply product quantiz quantization for the database. Then we can get this PQ code. So again, each PQ code is uh, just set of uh, integers, small integers. So it is not obvious how to compute the distance between Q and each PQ code, because this is just an uh, integer, so we cannot compute the distance. However, uh, DQX, uh, square DQX, can be efficiently approximated by DAQX bar. So this is asymmetric distance. And this is PQ code. So we can compute, uh, we can approximately compute the distance between this one and this one. So by using lookup trick, we can look up some pre computed distance table, then we can compute this one. Anyway, so the important thing is we can linearly scan each item. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, by uh, DA. So we can compute it, uh, we can run a linear search here. Okay. So this is a code. Uh, this is not pseudo code. This is actual Python. So on, because PQ is super simple, so it's only tens of lines is required for Python. And you can see this is a, a pure Python library, nano PQ. Uh, you can p install this one to check this algorithm. Okay. And there's a deep PQ uh, also available. So deep PQ there uh, use super, it's actually supervised such. So they use a label. So it's, it's different from the original PQ, which is an uh, unsupervised method. So this consists of base CNN plus PQ-like layer plus some loss. So they need cross information anyway. The uh, recent papers are considering how to uh, compute PQ for in you know, like deep feature, deep architecture. Okay. And if you have interest, uh, you can take a, you can please take a, this survey paper. They provide a much more comprehensive uh, survey for PQ. Uh, this is a relation between Hamming-based method and looking up based method. So actually, they are kind of a, a browser relationship. So if you have interest, please take a look. Okay, then we finish a million level uh, topic. And now let's move to billion level as such. So again, it is an inverted index plus data compression. So first, we need to uh, divide the space into some small subspaces because it's super large space, uh, large data pointer are, are here. Then for each subspace, there are many points. Then we use PQ to compress such data and uh, store that as a posting list. So this is a uh, general strategy to handle billion scale data. Okay, so this is a recap. Uh, please uh, remember the, the original vector can be converted to PQ code, and I use bar here. And if we have Q and X, 
and x is quantized to x bar pq code, then our task qx or is, uh, dqx can be efficiently approximated by x bar, like here. So the distance between original vectors can be approximated by pq code and query. Okay, so that's please don't re uh, please remember this one. Okay, then let's introduce a billion scale search. So invalid index plus pq. So first, first we need to prepare a cost quantizer like this. So this splits a, a space into k subspaces, and this c is a, this c is a, a c a centroid, and they are created by running k-means on the training data. So it's a, it's a k-means, and these are center vectors. Okay. Then let's introduce how to record data as x i uh, x one here. So how to record that? So if this one is in the this c two area. Then, if C2 is closest to XY, X1, then we compute a residual R1 between X1 and C2. So R1 equals X1 minus C2. So that means this green arrow here. Okay. Then, uh, we quantize R1 to R1 bar, like this. So we quantize this vector by using PQ. Then we record this with the ID 1 here. That means we record I and RI bar, like this. So I is ID here, in this case X1. Then RI bar is this uh, PQ quantized residual. And this is uh, how to record data. Okay. Then we repeat this process for all database vectors. So for all vectors, we record ID and PQ residual as a form of posting list, like this. So this is a basic data structure for uh, embedded in index plus PQ. Then how to do such? Uh, so given the query vector, our task is to find the nearest vector to Q. So again, if this Q is here uh, in the C2 region, then we uh, compute the ridge there again, RQ equals Q minus C2, right? Then we check this, this region, item in the this region, that means K equal 2. So if we see this posting list, there are two items here. So we compare these items to, uh, this by, to Q by using ridge there. So for example, we compare ri with rq, that means that this one is uh, our original, our final, uh, this, uh, we want to know this distance, right, q and xi. And uh, we can uh, use some simple math, if we subtract c2, this is a constant vector, then it's the same as uh, rq, ri. That, that means that the distance between the original vectors are the same as the distance between uh, residual vectors, right? So this is, uh, this can be approximated by DA, so RQ and RI bar, the PQ code, right? So here, PQ code and query residual. So we can find uh, compare these two vectors. So by scanning these, then we can get, uh, uh, we can find the smallest one. And there are many strategies here, but anyway, uh, this is a way to find uh, run the search. Okay, so finally, I will introduce our face. This is the uh, uh, strongest library, maybe, in the approximate nearest number of such. Uh, it's created by from the original authors of the PQ and a GPU expert at Facebook AR uh, Research. So there are two versions, or CPU versions, that all PQ-based methods are implemented, and GPU version that some, some PQ-based methods are implemented. And the bonus here is nearest neighbor search is also implemented, and it's quite fast, as I explained earlier. And k-means is also implemented. That's super fast. So in terms of programming, uh, what I explained previously here is written here. So we first define cost quantizer here, but this is actually uh, exactly the same as simple linear scan. We can create so simple linear scan in expert L2 and set as quantizer. Then we construct the whole inverted to uh, inverted files, so inverted uh, uh, data structure with PQ, 
and then here we put this quantizer as an input so here select a cost quantizer then some parameters are here okay then this is a thing then we can train and record data and search parameters and such right it's a kind of uh, very intuitive from this figure okay okay finally uh, I will introduce the state of the art uh, fastest method for billion scale data. The point here is this part, space partitioning, is actually this part itself is nearest neighbor search, right? So we can use the fastest nearest neighbor search method here. That means this graph traversal method. So we use these for this space partitioning. Okay. So this is the thing. So this part is replaced by a graph-based method, HNSW. So each blue dot is a centroid, right? So if we write code, like here. So now quantizer is not nearest neighbor such. It's a HNSW, so it's index HNSW flat, right? Then we use these for cost quantizer here. So it's very easy. We can easily switch cost quantizer from linear scan to HNSW and this is the best approach for billion scale data right now and this back this structure is a backbone of a recent uh, state of the art method like these two okay so the advantage of uh, face is that uh, it's from the original source of PQ so it's extremely efficient in terms of both theory and implementation and there, uh, it's used in a real-world product like Mercari. And for for billion scale data, face is the best option, I think. Now, especially a uh, large batch search is fast, meaning that the number of query is large. Uh, this advantage is that so it, the documentation is not enough actually, especially Python binding. And since there are a lot of methods, it's hard for a novice user to select the best algorithm. And currently, Anaconda is required. So people is not officially supported. Okay. This is a reference. Okay, so finally uh, we uh, we come back to this cheat sheet for an approximate nearest neighbor search. So we start from here. First, let's check. So you have GPU or not? If you have GPU, so please try a face GPU linear scan. Then, if your GPU memory is not enough, then you can try an approximated version of uh, IBFPQ, so GPU IBFPQ. And if it's still out of memory or uh, its accuracy is not enough, then going back to CPU, then try CPU linear scan. And if you think it's slow, then please try a HNSW by either NMS lib or a phase implementation. And uh, if you like, you can uh, switch these arrows. Then, if this is still slow or it's out of memory, then you can try uh, this CPU and uh, HNSW plus IBFPQ. Then, if still it's not enough, then you can change parameters like here. Okay. So, and one thing is that so in this talk, so we assume that these like 100. So, if D is much larger, then please run PCA. Okay, so this is a seed seed. Okay, finally, uh, I will show some random topics about nearest neighbor search. The first one is benchmark. So there is an AN and benchmarks. It's this, this repository. It's super popular. Uh, it's provide a comprehensive and thorough benchmark uh, for various libraries, and it's Docker-based isolation. So it's super. Uh, it's really extensive. Uh, and its top right is better, so it's meaning that the method is here and better. And currently, NMS Lib and NGT are competing each other for the first place. So they are fighting. So this is really uh, include a lot of methods. So you can try that. This and this is another benchmark. It's much more uh, lightweight and easy to use. So it's just uh, running some Python lines, then you can render this kind of image. And the interesting thing here is uh, this library uh, implemented uh, March run. So March run meaning that so running all algorithm and all dataset at once by using this Hydra uh, library. Okay. And another topic is tree on scale search n equal 10 to 
the 12, so 1 tera. So the sense of scale is that if it's k level, it's just in a second on uh, just in a second on local machine. If it's m, then all data can be on memory. So try we can try similar approaches. If it's g, then we need to compress data by PQ, and only two data sets are available, right? So if it is t, so we cannot even imagine what happening. So only face wiki. So there's a dis uh, discussion about one t vectors. Do they use distributed or a memory map or many other techniques? An interesting thing here is this is a figure from this wiki, and they are discussing with a sparse matrix of 15 extra element. So it's uh, it's super huge. Okay. Ah, this is also a very interesting topic. So recently, many people try to uh, develop a nearest neighbor search engine. That is something like ANN plus SQL. And algorithm itself is uh, face or NMS lib or NGT or something. As uh, many companies try to create these uh, like uh, search engine for using nearest neighbor search. So it's provide a lot of function. It's practical functions like distributed system or uh, data deletion uh, or something. Okay. And finally, I introduce some problems of nearest neighbor search. So one thing is no mathematical background. So currently, only actual measurement matters, so recall and runtime. Uh, nearest neighbor search problem was originally mathematically defined 10 years ago, but recently no one cares about this uh, definition. So when the score is high, so it's not clear the reason, actually. So the method itself is good, or the implementation is good, or the method is just, method just happened to work well for the target dataset, so it's not sure. And the difference of math library is if library matters, for example. That's uh, one example. So if one can explain why this approach works good for this dataset, then it would be a great contribution to the field. And not enough datasets. So currently, only two datasets are available for billion scale data. So new and diverse dataset would be uh, good for the field. Okay, so finally, I will show you uh, this cheat sheet again, and then this is the uh, uh, end of my talk. Uh, thank you.